So we're, we filmed early enough today, Friday, so I can get this all set up. I guess Saturdays would be the release date just to keep the um, trend going. Um, and then that way we don't uh, interfere with Donna's Texocity podcast that came out today or Friday, yesterday, whatever. Um, so we have a lot to talk about in this episode. We have um, All Out, uh, BTE, and of course, a very interesting uh, Dynamite episode, which worked with my prediction from uh, the Battle Royale, except he's not the number one contender, but he did make an appearance like I said he would. Um of course, I am speaking of the man, or was it? What is he? The best man, uh, Miro. Miro. Which we'll get into later, which I fanboyed out and got all excited, even though I couldn't recognize him with the blonde hair. Which me and him are almost there. I just gotta blonde my hair a little bit more, and we'll look exactly alike. Um, so of course, <laughs> uh, starting out, let's start out with uh, all out and get this over with. Um, I would say it's one of their worst pay-per-views they've had. Probably the worst one. Um, I still enjoyed it for the most part where I could. But compared to all the other pay-per-views that they've put out, um, I would say it's probably one of the worst ones out of what the six, seven that they've put out so far. Um, but um, we'll get into it all out here. So um, due to the... I guess they said the reaction on Twitter. They pushed the uh, was a tooth and nail match from the pre-show from the buy-in over to the main show. So they needed to fill that, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So they replaced it with the bad boy Joy Janela versus Serpentico, who happened to have Luther with them. So I guess that's a team now. Um, I guess it's probably something on Dark that they team up all the time. Um, so neither one of us there. Had a <laughs> had a pick, so um, just a typical blow off pre show match. Uh, Joey Janela with the win to help build him up, which we get to later in Dynamite. It's a episode there. So then the next scheduled match was a uh, Private Party versus Dark Orders number three and number four, uh, which is Alex Reynolds and John Silver. I love how their trunks incorporate their name and the number now um, on Alex Reynolds because he's three. <laughs> The E in uh, Reynolds is a three. And then on Silver, I think the L and the V are, are the numer- uh, Roman numeral four. Um, so, you know, quick back and forth match. I missed this because I was going to the store to uh, get food before the match started. So I saw the beginning and then I kind of was running around the shop. So I didn't get to um, watch it all. Uh, which is why I asked you who won because I didn't get to see the ending. <laughs> but um, Private Party won. Um, so that puts you up one. That's the best part of being uh, not live. We can edit this all out. <laughs> Private Party gets the win, so that puts you up 1-0. So <laughs> you're up in the predictions, which I think that was very important because I think there was only like one or two that we were um, different on. And I know yeah. that was one of them. Um, so of course the opening contest when the show finally started was, um, all out. It was the two uh, the <laughs> opening contest of all out was the tooth and nail match between the Dr. Britt Baker versus our favorite wrestler, female wrestler in the world, Big Swole. Um, she, um, uh, of course, Big Swole wins after Britt Baker injects herself with, well, gets forced to inject herself with Novocaine when she was trying to inject it into Big Swole. Um, causing the com- the comedic uh, leg fell asleep, which I don't think Novocaine affects that fast. Um, but pretty much within like 10 seconds, her she's dead leg, so she can't walk around. And then Big Swole busts out the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the knockout gas and wins by DQ. And I'm like, is that even like a legal way to win? I mean, it's, it, it's no rules. You do realize she legit, like stab herself with a syringe like yeah re- re- regardless of whatever was actually in that you know she legit stabbed herself with a syringe like have you ever seen that in professional wrestling no and it's a big you know I mean? needle too it wasn't like a like a little ass needle give credit to her now 
I think so. From what I'm hearing is Brits still hurt, but she's not a hundred percent. But they they went on with this because they said that she'd be ready by, um, all wow. out. And I mean, I I I I enjoyed the match. I thought it was funny. It, it what mm-hmm. what kind of threw me off a little bit was, uh, you know, like in the beginning where. You know, you see Reba, like, she's, like, she has this accent. For whatever <laughs> reason, she has an accent when she's talking to her. And then she screams for Brit, and then as, you know, Big Soul's looking for her, you see her kind of, like, in the background with this evil, like, ominous look with her mask on. Kind of mm-hmm. reminds me of um, when Cody Rhodes did the, uh, not the beautiful Cody Rhodes, but when he wore the mask. Mm-hmm. And he was kind of, like, scarred. So it kind of reminded me of that. So, uh, you know, so, like, Britt Baker was, like, playing this, like, complete psychopath, which is legit trying to kill Big Swole, mm-hmm. which you should try to be, I mean, it, it, it played the part, you know, but then when Reba throwing in that comedic stuff, it kind of mm-hmm. threw it off a little bit, um, but I, I, say, I think I overall. Think, I was going to say, I think maybe the accent, I, I didn't get much the beginning, but I think maybe the accent was to kind of throw off Big Swole to think she was in the wrong dental office, <laughs> like, she knows what dental office Britt Baker works at she's not gonna go to the wrong one but maybe yeah. that was like the whole like supposed to be the joke about it um I, yeah I like the spot where she's with the drill trying to like drill a hole in Big Soul's head and misses and goes right through the chair and gets stuck and she's like Reba help me pull this out I thought yeah. that was pretty funny I mean like I said I I think overall I enjoyed the match it was something different mm-hmm. and you haven't seen something like that in a women's match mm-hmm. so Plus, give it was credit opening, for that. it was the opening so it was like, you know, something light, not get too crazy. And it, like you said, it was a good use of the fact that she probably couldn't wrestle in a full match. So you do that and it doesn't involve a lot of actual wrestling. It's just more like spots and, yeah. and segments. So she doesn't actually have to fully get in there. And then I guess that makes more sense why she ends up losing. Because if she wins, then you're expecting another match. As she loses, you know, she don't have to come back for a while. And that's fine because she lost. I don't think this is over. I think they're going to have mm-hmm. an actual match at some point, but I think this will kind of prolong it a little bit. Yeah, so that brought us to one and one because we both had uh, Britt Baker winning. So then um, he had the Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express um, and another uh, follow-up from the Dynamite match where the winners got to go up against each other. Um, in BTE, they did... Um, tease it. I kind of wish that they do like a bonus BTE the week of the shows because it kind of like throws off our reviews now because <laughs> it has it like um, pre and post all out in that vlog in the BTE episode. So um, uh, before that, they're talking about in the BTE episode just to kind of give some filler for the match. Um, Jungle Express goes in and tells. Uh, the Bucks, like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, they didn't pose. They're being too serious. Like, what's going on? So then it starts the whole hype up by saying <laughs> that uh, Luchasaurus says he's going to do a Canadian Destroyer on uh, both Bucks at the same time, according to Monk, uh, Marco Stunt. Because uh, the running joke is that uh, everybody and their mom can do a Canadian Destroyer except Luchasaurus. Um, so he's like, I'm going to do a Canadian Destroyer on both of you guys. Um, so the match came out. It was... Um, Pretty simple uh, match. I know um, it ends with uh, Jungle Boy getting the BT trigger, which I'm kind of annoyed with it because I'm, I'm annoyed with the BT trigger in general just because that was like, it's too similar to Hangman, uh, the last call with Hangman and Kenny to me. So that's where like, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I thought that match was phenomenal. I thought that that's, like, if you want to watch a Young Bucks match, that was Young Bucks match. And, like, uh, fucking, they're, they're going to make, um, they're going to make, a, what's his name? Uh, Jungle Boy a fucking star, dude. Like, that's how you put over, like, that's how you build a star. Like, he got his ass beat. He got the, like, the shit kicked out of him. And he was just coming back, coming back, coming back. Uh, so, I think that was you know, very crucial, and, like, some of the spots, like, oh, my God, did you see where he was holding him, uh, holding Jungle Boy on the ropes, and they did the fucking swanton? Oh, my God, that looked, that, yeah. like, right there, that looked painful. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, that's what you want to see in wrestling, is you see moves, and you're just like, holy shit, that looked like it hurt. 
You know, and mm-hmm. they just they just execute that perfectly. I enjoyed the match. I like that match. Uh, it, it's, it's it's just your typical young bucks, you know, match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I think it was a I think it was a really good match. Um, in general, um, you know, the heel, the whole fact that it kind of works good that they're kind of starting to work heel, so it wasn't just a baby face baby face match. Um, I know they're not officially fully turned as heels, which I'm kind of a little skeptical about them trying to turn heel at the same time Kenny is because then that kind of beats like the dynamic of them like breaking up the elite because like with hangman it works fine because hangman's now you know starting to be face and you have like the young bucks gonna be heel and Kenny turning heel on him so it makes sense but if Kenny and the bucks were gonna have any beef that just kind of like defeats the purpose if they're both gonna be uh, heels at the same time so that's just I don't know where they're going with that, but I think it's more the sympathy on Hangman that Hangman's going to be like without friends. You know, we'll we'll get into this later, but I. So in this match, they came out and they were just balls to walls, like serious, like doing heelish stuff. You know, like oh my my favorite part of the match <laughs> is when they super kicked Marco. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they super kicked the hell out of him. Um. But you know they they came out and they did healer stuff, so it, it, it was like oh they're gonna turn. But I mean I'll get more into that down the road. But um, yes, but yeah, I thought overall it was a good Young Bucks match. They came in, you know, with uh, they just came out with uh, you know uh, like, like a purpose and not so much playing around this time. Mm-hmm. So of course next um, is the Casino Battle Royale. So, um, I like to say that I'm glad they're finally slowly it's taken three of these, but they're slowly now figuring out how to properly do this match since this is like one of their staples. Um, so this time, um, it's still the same rules that there's four suits, so there's four rounds of wrestlers coming out, with the fifth one being the wild card. But I like how now they actually give everybody their own entrance and not just here's five guys go out there and have people don't care. Um, so, of course, the first group that came out was uh, Best Friends, uh, Christopher Daniels, Jake Hager, uh, The Blade, and Ray Phoenix all came out as the first group. Um, it then was, the wasn't it just Trent, though, of the Best Friends? Oh, yeah, 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 just Trent. My bad. Yeah, so it's just Trent, uh, Trent, Christopher Daniels, Hager, uh, Blade, and Phoenix. Um, so they came out, and then in the second group, you had uh, Kazarian, uh, Will Hobbs, which was a really weird uh, pick for this match, um, just out of nowhere, especially since they were building up on the whole, um, you know, gangland mentality where all the factions were coming out as like groups or whatever. Um, and then you had Chuck Taylor and Santana and Ortiz to finish up the group. Um, they're in the second group. And then by that point, you had um, Blade and Hager, Blade get eliminated by Hobbs. Hager get eliminated by Daniels. Um, and then Hobbs also eliminated Ray Phoenix. So it looks like this was Wait, a welcome. Hager, Hager got eliminated by Sunny Kiss. Yeah. What was it Sunny Kiss? Kiss. Sunny Kiss uh, doing that, yeah. Okay, well, AEW, you need to fix your notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, then in the third batch, you had um, Billy Not Gun, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pentagon. And then, of course, absolute Ricky Starks, the machine Brian Cage, and of course, they couldn't come out without Darby Allen. Um, and we'll get to that spot in a minute here. <laughs> so Darby, well, okay, so these notes are bad. So Darby actually eliminates Phoenix, and then Cage throws out Billy Gunn from the match. And then, leading up to that, the final group comes out, which is Sean Spears, um, Eddie Kingston, the Butcher, Sunny Kiss, and then the Murder Hawk coming out here. So then, as everybody's in the ring, um, doesn't Ricky start get thrown out first? I think Ricky gets thrown out first then, by um, Darby, I believe. Yes. So then he goes under the ring and pulls out the body bag. Yep. Uh, as they open the body bag, it reveals that there's thumbtacks inside the body bag, which I don't know why you would think thumbtacks in a battle royal would be a good mat, a good idea. But well, I think the idea was to have it inside contained inside the bag but brian k's dumb idiot 
fucking just made a mess, <laughs> poured it everywhere, and then it poured in the bag properly. So I guess what happened was he, you know how when you open a zipper or a bag, mm -hmm. and you kind of lay it on a little bit out on top of the zipper, and when you go to zip it, it just falls out. I think that's mm -hmm. what happened. Is he, you know, the thing is, if you look at the spot, Darby had to help him stuff himself in a freaking body bag, which is yeah, you know, stupid. But the the, the idiot. Didn't put the thumbtacks in the fucking bag. You mean it was just literally all in the ring? What I probably would have done to get that same effect, because either way, the f a fact of like he landed on thumbtacks is gonna hurt regardless, is that they should have actually had it. Maybe uh, Ricky Starks pouring the thumbtacks on the steps, so that way when he goes flying, he <laughs> lands on top of the thumbtacks. Um, but I guess it's you know the whole shocking effect that the thumbtacks are in the bag so no matter if you think the bag was rigged or not he still got squashed with the thumbtacks i guess that was the whole image they were trying to show but um or, or what they could have done was have the thumbtacks already like done like already in the bag and then you mm -hmm. know brian cage just take his hand in and you know like just drip it out you know what i mean mm -hmm. that and then have him like dump them like outside of the ring to show that they were in there well, no, I mean, like, put your hand in there and then, like, um, put your hand in there and then, like, pour the thumbtacks out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, not, like, like pour it back into the bag. But you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. just show that they're in there. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, man. It, 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 I think the spot could have worked. It was just executed very poorly. Mm -hmm. Very, very poorly. So, yeah. So, once they finally zip them up, um, Brian Cage decides to learn, uh, lawn dart Darby. Right into the steps, outside the ramp. Um, Dude, that shit you looks that ramp. brutal. Um, from some certain camera angles, it looks like he went uh, head first, neck first into those steps. Um, and then, of course, uh, what's his name? Taz is on commentary, so uh, the announcers are like, "Oh, we don't want to see the carnage." So then Ricky Stark goes and unzips it just to show like he's dead. Um, then the wild card comes in, which is uh, Matt Seidel, which, yes, you were right. It was Evan Bourne. I just didn't watch in that era, so I didn't know that that was him. <laughs> um, but, yes, he comes in as the 21st entrant. I was kind of worried that they were going to let him, like, win because he was the wild card, and normally the wild card tends to, like, win. So um, that was, uh, a, I guess, a decent surprise entrant. He botches. <laughs> When he enters, because he's trying to do a shooting star press off the ropes, and it looks like he slips off the turnbuckle, so he ends up just going flat on the uh, floor or on the in the ring instead of doing the <laughs> um, flip there. So of course it gets down to my logistical pick because I originally had Rusev coming in and uh, winning it all, but uh, my second pick out of everybody who was announced was going to be Eddie Kingston. So it gets down to him and the Murder Hawk. And then going back and forth, the only, thing I, the only thing I didn't like was that they, like, just automatically assumed that he was afraid of snakes. I wish during, you know, instead of doing that whole Battle Royal mass that they had last week on Dynamite, maybe they should have, like, had, like, a snake go by or maybe him, like, find the snake by accident and freak out so it would make more sense that he's scared of snakes other than just, just saying, like, oh, he's scared of snakes. I think that would have helped at least make it a little more... More logical, like, oh, shit, here comes the bag with the snake on it to scare him. Um, yeah. So he freaks out. Um, they throw him into Butcher and Blade, and, of course, they can't catch him, so he falls and he loses, making the Murder Hawk the winner of the match and is now the new number one contender for um, the AEW Championship, which, at this point, I kind of figured out the ending of the pay-per-view at this point, but I was kind of still hoping for things to change. But... um. That was the Battle Royale. I think it's one of the best ones that they've had so far. Um, Battle Royale Rise. Uh, I think the first one was still good with Hangman. I think it was still my favorite one. But this wasn't a bad um, Royal Rumble. <laughs> I thought it was bad. I thought there was botch after botch. I thought it was just a fucking mess. And, like, especially the whole, like, thumbtack situation. Oh, my God. Like, they just... They I just, just think this had a better build up out of all of them. That's why I think it's one of the better ones out of the three or four that they've had. Um, but I still think the original one was the best just because it was Hangman and it was he wasn't going to enter and he ended up entering. But this one actually had like storylines going into it and storylines coming out of it. 
um, that branched out as the other ones before were just like, here's some random people. Let's have a match. Um, I do kind of wish that they would kind of maybe have people actually compete to try to enter and then maybe do the Joker instead of it being a surprise entrance. Maybe it's like, so, like they have like a tournament and the winner gets to be the last person to enter and maybe do it that way too. I think that would be kind of cool um, for it, but the, the concept's getting better. Um, so next uh, matchup is the controversial uh, Broken Rules match um, for a lot of reasons, but um, I don't know why the match decided to start out in the football field. It didn't really make any sense that that's where you start. I know it was to push the spot of the golf cart, but it didn't really make much sense that they were both out there. Like Matt knew, oh, uh, Sammy's going to be out here. Let me go out there. Like if he was in the ring and Sammy would have been like, come and find me, Matt, that would have made a little bit more sense. Um, of course, they um, Sammy doesn't know how to drive, so he crashes the damn golf cart into the porta potties, uh, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Um, then, of course, they're battling off um, the tragic scene. They hop on the forklift. Uh, Matt Hardy magically knows how to work one and lifts it up high enough to below them. There is a table that has masks that they give out to people that are supposed to have masks before they enter the building. So there's that. Trying to make an excuse for why there's a table there right next to the forklift. So I think they should have just gone with the... What was the original? Um, I think it was going to be like a DDT off the top. I think they should have gone with that. Um, as close as those tables were in general, I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to do a spear off the top of the um, forklift there. I mean, uh, whatever the scalpel there. So, of course, they go for it, and Matt Hardy misses the table and lands on his head. Um, and it didn't look as bad live until they started like showing the replay. We see he misses it completely. I thought maybe the table kind of didn't make him take the hit as hard. But um, yeah, so he hits the table. You can kind of tell right off the bat. I rewatched it again a second time. Um, and you can tell just like when they started bat um, locking up after the thing, he just was like stumbling everywhere. Um, so I really think he was concussed regardless of what AEW says. What, what regardless of what says, like me playing sports, he got knocked out. Mm -hmm. okay, he's literally knocked. His arms were flat out, like in the air. Okay, mm -hmm. he was knocked out. So what I think what happened was, and this is what happened with Evan Bourne. It was so freaking humid in Jacksonville that night. I think he, it mm -hmm. was like ninety-two degrees, and the humidity was at like ninety percent. It was so freaking humid um, that um, the, it just everything was just slippery. So he they overshot it. I think that they the weight of Sammy, the force of it, mm -hmm. pushed them because they. I mean, you, you, I, it was a combination of things. Is that Matt did hit the table towards his back end, but Sammy, if you look at it, if you look at the video again, Sammy's uh, like body mm -hmm. lands on Matt's head, and I think that's what knocked him out. Mm -hmm. So I mean, his head hit the concrete. Like that, that, you know, that, that made him woozy. And then when Sammy landed on his head, that was just kind of like game over at that point. Uh, yeah, he, he the match should have stopped. They should have yeah. went on with that. It it, it, it it dampened the whole show. And you can obviously tell that he he was not completely in it. He was just out of it. And he was just trying to get his bearings. They stopped it. And for whatever reason, decided, oh, okay, we'll restart it again. You know, mm -hmm. after after the doctor said he was cleared, th no, th th there's no way that uh, he cleared him no that way. fast. Yeah, there was no way that he could do it that fast. Like he may have shown symptoms right away, but if you saw him physically, he was not. Mm -hmm. He was not all there. So they should have mm -hmm. that that whole thing should have. And that's and that's where like I saw where I was like, it was legit because you when you see him right after that he gets up and that. Um, after Sammy and I think Sammy knew too. That's why he's like yelling at her, like count him, like don't check on him, count him, and let's end the match and let's just call it. Um, because I know they were giving a lot of crap to Sammy too about being dangerous and stuff. But I mean, he legitly too. It was just like they said, um, with Matt not knowing where he was at, just the adrenaline, knowing like he's in a match and they're counting that he needs to get up, like, and that's why he popped up and she should have just kept oh, yeah. counting. She was at eight by the time he finally got to his feet. Like she should just been like nine, ten, and just 
botch it similar to um uh this Monday when Ricochet and I forgot who he was wrestling and uh they were wrestling the War Raiders too and one of the War Raiders got hurt. So all they did was like they skipped to the they cut to the finish. Ricochet actually kicked out, but the referee still counted three and like called it and said like that was it because they knew they had to wrap up the match because he was hurt. Like you could have done that there too and been done with it. And you could have you came up with some excuse that you know the match never started in the ring, so it didn't count. So Matt's not gone or whatever. Like you could have played that off as because I know the whole reason why Matt wanted to go back was the stipulation, like he can't lose. But you know, health comes first. You shouldn't go back and finish it. Um, I agree. Yeah, and then that's even too. Like I know it looked like Sammy wasn't paying attention, but because um, I know that was another criticism they had that um, when he got back or when they put up the X, the referees had to come and separate him. And they were like, why didn't he just like walk away? But that was the whole thing that it's Sammy. So he's supposed to be like, oh, yeah, that's it to kind of help the realism of it that he doesn't want it to end because he's the bad guy. But um, I mean, he really wasn't fighting the refs. If you look at it, he's just kind of like, hold me back, hold me back. OK, let's go. But um, yeah, they should have just called it off and then used some excuse or some um, or even not even an excuse. They could have just played it up uh, and use the realism of it and be like, we think he was concussed. So the stipulation no longer counts because he got hurt. Well, no, I mean, they, I mean, they could have done one of two things. They could have called it off, right, and said, because here's the thing is, Matt Hardy is, Matt Hardy is not going to be wrestling anytime soon. Mm-hmm. It's very clear. What they should have done was say, um, you know, Matt Hardy lost, so boom, he's gone. Matt Hardy is gone from AEW, but not broken, Matt Hardy. You know, yeah. not another character. Mm-hmm. They just... You know, and the thing is, what scared me the most was this dude is concussed. Even if he wasn't concussed, he just had the shit knocked out of him. Mm-hmm. And he's climbing this fucking scaffold. Yes, that exactly. Easily, that he could have easily fell off of. And then what the fuck are you going to say after that? You know, imagine <laughs> imagine he would have fell off. He would have slipped. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I, I played football and I've gotten concussions before to the point where I would see like three, like three different, you know, three different people, like the same person, but three of them. And yeah. I'd ask my coach, who do I hit? I'm like hit the middle guy. There are tapes of me just like jumping and uh, I'm hitting nothing, you know? Like mm-hmm. I I can't imagine like climbing something like that and having my bear witch of it. I think up to this point, like the whole pay-per-view was just a shit show mm-hmm. and it was bad. And it was, it was just like, botch after botch. Uh, you know, the Ed Bourne thing, that wasn't his fault, or mm-hmm. Matt Tadell, that wasn't his fault. I mean, it was a slippery ropes. I get it. Luckily, he adjusted and he landed on his back and on his head, thank God. But up to this point, it put a damper. Like, th- after this mm-hmm. happened, it ruined the whole mood. Yeah. Like, I just think, like, and it was, like, back-to-back, too. So it was, like, boom, he slips. Then, boom, Darby almost dies. Then, boom, Matt gets concussed. And it's, like, oh, wow, we're only, like, an hour into the show and we still have three more hours to go. And uh, what's his name? Uh, he did a power slam. Um, Lance Archer did a power slam on Royal Rumble, and he you see him in so much pain because he got thumbtacked in his elbow. Mm-hmm. You know, and he was he's like you see him like winced in pain, but then he covers it up, you know, because he's supposed to be a badass. But it's like, dude, this is like one thing after another, and it's like, damn mm-hmm. man, y'all got y'all got to get this together for real. Yeah. So um, from there, and then I think that's what makes it makes the next match even like worse because you have everybody like even the announcers themselves you can see that like that just like threw them off because they didn't know what the hell was really going on either um so next you have um sheeta versus thunder rosa um i do gotta agree everybody's saying most people are saying this is like the best woman's match they've seen in um in AEW. um a lot of people say the thunder rosa match on dynamite was better but um Who's saying that? <laughs> of course, Uncle Jim. Uncle he, said that, he said uh, this match was good for, but it shows that what happens when somebody who's green takes on a uh, veteran, but the somebody who's green wants to be a mud show wrestler because uh, he doesn't like Sheeta. Um, but uh, J- uh, what's his name? I forget a sidekick, not Jim. Um, Brian. Brian was like, no, Sheeta's pretty good. She's just still a little green. She needs to. Uh, he thought she's good for where she was working, but she needs to like work with higher end talent to get better. But that she still has potential to be a really good woman's wrestler, according to I Jim. Am, I appreciate Sheeta so much because she works hard 
mm-hmm. at everything she's doing. Like even like her English from the very beginning, like you could she could barely speak any English, and now it's like holy shit, she's speaking like mm-hmm. full fledged English. You know, so I I I appreciate Sheila for that. Like she works mm-hmm. hard. And I mean, she does seem like a legit like challenge. Like Riho, Riho just looked like it was like a teenage girl trying to wrestle. Um, I don't know who I'd pick in the match between Riho and uh, Marco Stunt. That'd be a uh, they're both about pretty even. But um, <laughs> Sheeta does look like she could be like a legit like wrestler champion. Um, there, um, of course, because you put her up against the boy uh, Nyla Rose, but <laughs> that's a different story. Um, yeah, I really didn't think that thunder rosa was gonna win like we said um but it was a pretty good back and forth match um between and apparently it worked out really good because thunder rosa is gonna defend her nwa title next week on dynamite um so i guess she's gonna eventually become a uh, part of the roster uh maybe they should do a well i don't know if the nwa is still gonna exist anymore now with all the me too movement and stuff but maybe they merge the titles together at some point. Wait, what happened with the NWA? Oh, we'll talk about that later. I don't know what happened. What happened? Um, so there was that Me Too movement that happened yeah. um like two months ago. And um, one of the um head like bookers for the NWA was one of the ones that was accused and they have like legitimate proof of all of it that he was accused of. Um so he's like stepped down and left, so they left like nobody in charge, but he was like pretty much like the only booker, like nobody else was booking the show. Um, so like they lost that. And then, um, I think David Starr was one of their champions. He was also in like pretty much half the roster was like accused. Oh, so they're okay. So they're just assholes. Like half the roster is assholes. Okay. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> but they were like, but, um, and they were talking to Billy Corrigan. He was like, yeah, this is probably not going to be something we're going to continue if like half my roster is gone now. So, um, so that's why like you starting to see like, uh, what's his name? Bad news. Barrett go back to. WWE. Um, that's why like Ricky Stark left because Ricky Stark was NWA also. Yeah. Uh, I think um Kingston was also NWA also. So you're seeing like them leave. And then I think everybody else that's left on the roster, they're pretty much just up for like rent at the moment. But because NWA, you know, will never die, another company will take it up and restart anyway. That's why they're like, Oh yeah, we're lending out our talent. Uh here's our woman's champion. But yeah, I don't think at the moment they really have a NWA at the moment. Um, so um, that was the previous match. So I think at this point you're up. Um, yeah, you're still up by like two um, on our picks here. So then the always wonderful eight man tag match was next. You had the Dark Order, which was uh, Mr. Brody Lee, Stu Grayson, uh, Evil Uno, so that one and two, and Colt Cabana. Why am I missing one? No, oh, no, that's right. Yeah, and Cole Cabana. Uh, I guess he doesn't get a number. Um, versus um, <laughs> versus uh, Team uh, Cody, which is the Natural Nightmares, accompanied by Brandy Rhodes, Little Brandy, Ali, Ali's Ghost, the Ghost of Christmas Past, and then uh, anybody else who wants to wear a neck tattoo. Um, and then Matt Cardona and Scorpio Sky. Um, I'm really surprised that. The Dark Order lost this match. I really thought that um, Team Rhodes would get destroyed again. Um, the only time I was expecting him to actually win would be if Cody made an appearance, which I know we talked last week. He's shooting with uh, Stephen Amell. And as we'll get to later, he has another big project he's working on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a good showing for Matt Cardona. Um, like you said, it looks like they're just building him up to get him ready to go for wherever he's going to go next. Um, Scorpio Sky as well. I'm kind of a little confused now because I thought the whole reason they put him in there was to push him as the next contender for the TNT title. Um, but apparently that ended up not being the case with uh, Dustin winning, um, which we'll kind of get into that later in Dynamite as well. Um, but it was a good back and forth match. Um, of course, Colt Cabana screws it up for them, um, trying to do a, uh, What's this? Was the frog splash? That is finisher. A high fly. Yeah, how you tried to high fly and moving got. Yeah. So he um falls off and then um loses. So Mr. Brody is mad, upset with him, and <laughs> carries on to BTE later in the week. Um, 
So he wins with the extra move. Um, and then right after the match, because, you know, um, Tony Khan is sitting there already planning Dynamite while the show's still going on. <laughs> right after the match, Tony announced with Dustin that he now gets a title shot on Dynamite for the TNT title, which ends up being the main event on the show, which we'll get to later. Um, so um, it was an okay match. I feel like at this point of the show, um, you're just kind of like, hurry up, let's get this on. Because I think at this point, it's already like nine o'clock. And I was thinking that there was just a tag team match and uh, the world title match left, but I forgot about the Mimosa match was in between there as well. But um, yeah, the match we've been, we knew it was going to happen. We had been waiting for it to happen, and it did. The AEW World Tag Team Championship match between Hangman, Kenny, and FTR. Uh, with Tully Blanchard being their uh, manager walking out there. Um, I think it told a good story. Um, like they were mentioning in the match, it kind of shows off um, the difference between uh, being a tag team and actually just being two guys put together. Which, you know, is the WWE problem. There's not really tag teams over there. It's just like, oh, we have nothing to do with this wrestler and this wrestler. Now you're a tag team. Go ahead and go do something and be, um, be somebody. Um, so, of course, it was a good back and forth match. I feel like this match was given more time due to the whole um, the whole thing with Matt Hardy. Because I don't know how much longer that match was going to go. But I feel like they just moved the time over here. Because this match did feel like it went on forever. Um, at least for me at this point. Um, but, um, I mean, it was still a good match. I was very entertained um, with it, seeing the clash between them two. Um, of course, it ends when Kenny accidentally gives the V-trigger to um, Hangman, which knocks them out, and then FTR gets the win and becomes the new tag team champions. Um, but the match isn't really the storyline. It's what happens after the match that ends up being the part of the show. So, um, Hangman gets up a little dazed and reaches out to Kenny to kind of go for the, the console that they lost. And Kenny just lets him fall to the ground. Um, the one cool thing, um, that I saw there was they had the, I think it's the beers in the corner and at the end, Kenny kicks them. Oh yeah. Cause, uh, FTR puts the beers there after the match next to Hangman's body. So then after Kenny kicks him and it like it wets the camera. So actually in BTE, if you watch at the end where they're showing like the whole like they're all broken up. Right when Kenny kicks it, they do a cool transition to the broken picture in BTE, which was pretty cool using the footage from that that part where he kicks the beer. Um, so then Kenny leaves, walks outside. The Bucks are happen to be waiting in Gorilla. And um, he tells him, get in the car with me. Let's go. And they refuse to get in the car while Kenny drives off on his own. So I guess that officially means that he and the Bucks are no longer elite as well. I I, I don't think that. I think uh, – well, so going back to the whole thing, one of the key pieces was before he let him fall, he was – he was going to hit him with a chair. Or oh, yes. the, table. That weird-ass yeah. table. And um, he ends up putting it down, but then instead of helping Hickman get up, he just – let him fall and then walks away, walks to the back. Um, and then as he's telling, he's, he's pretty much telling Young Bucks, are you with me or you're not? He's like, it's time for a clean slate. And I think that's the, the the big, yes. where everyone's like freaking out about, because I mean, obviously it refers to him being the cleaner. Mm-hmm. Um, we, and we see teases of that and they're saying, you know, like I'm done, I'm done, everything I've done for him, I'm sick of it. Like, are you getting the car, are you, are you getting the car with me or not? Like it's time, it, it, it's time for us to do us there, pretty much. Now this is where I get upset with this whole thing is. So you tease that you know they're gonna be they're gonna turn the Bucks are gonna turn heel, but then like so in the match like with um, Jungle Boy or Jurassic Express, there's no compassion. They're just beating their ass, taking care of business, mm-hmm. you know. And then all of a sudden, there's this compassion. Like where did they come from? Like. Two hours ago, like you didn't care, you know, you super kick Marco stuff, like you didn't even care. Mm-hmm. So it was just like it was all over the place, you know. I wanted, I I, I see what they're doing. I mean, the, the name of the game is with AEW is the slow burn, mm-hmm. slow burn payoff, you know. And I get that, I understand that. I was upset at first that Kenny didn't turn heel, and I was like, what's taking so long? 
But now I understand what they're doing. It's literally a slow burn. So mm -hmm. uh, they've done that before. That's kind of their MO. Cool. I mean, cool, you know. But mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think eventually we'll, 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 it's going to pay off in a good in a good way. I just mm -hmm. don't understand how the Bucks are like so wishy-washy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I really thought they were going to end up costing them the match. I was thinking that they were going to return the favor and like um, – Either like Kenny's getting pinned, they were gonna come out and grab Hangman's leg and cost him, or and then like after the match, maybe super kick him or something. But I guess it 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 makes sense because you want FTR to have a clean win since they're supposed to be like the dominant team in the tag team division. So you don't want to give them the belts on a fact of some other storyline like interfering yeah. with it. But you also could still build the fact that like when they win, the Bucks could have came out and been like, the only reason why you're champions is that we rather have you guys than Hangman. Be champion after he cost us, or, and that or could still they, build it. Or what they could have done was um, the Bucks pull Kenny away and they're like, "Hey, let's go, let's go." You know what I mean? The opposite of Kenny, and mm -hmm. then they're like, "Okay, yeah." And Kenny walks with them. And he's like, "Fuck it." Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I was thinking. They could do a double heel turn. Like you could even have that too, where like, um, even like that, like they came out and then like they convince Kenny, uh, Kenny, like, "Hey, like." We get where you're coming from now. Like, let's go ahead and just do it. And, like, I don't know. They still cost them the match somehow. But they used the fact that the only reason why FTR won was because the Bucks cost them the match, not that they're the best tag team. And then you can still have – if they're still planning to keep, you know, the Bucks and Kenny together, because that's what it looks like with both of them doing a – trying to go towards a double heel turn there. Um, it would make more sense that way. And then, like, they all cut off Hangman. That way it doesn't leave any question, like, do the Bucks, like – there, do they still want to be with Hangman? Because, like, in BT, which we'll get to in a little bit, like, Hangman realizes he fucked up and he's trying to, like, patch it back up, but the Bucks don't want to hear it at this point. Um, and then Kenny's pretty much done with the uh, tag team as we get to in Dynamite later. So that's why I feel like that could have been a good storyline, but like you said, it's always a slow burn, and especially with COVID, what do we got going on? You don't want to rush everything anyway. So um, I guess we'll see in November where that all ends up. Um, so finally... To end the feud, you have the Mimosa Mayhem match between uh, Jericho and Orange Cassidy. Um, I love how they couldn't design a pool that didn't have a lip on it. So they had to use pool noodles to cover up <laughs> the the tub. Um, so you had one on both sides. Um, I don't really know how I feel about this match. I really wasn't too crazy about the feud to begin with. Um, I know, like you said, it was just more of a push on TNT's end that they like him, so they want Orange Cassidy to be like the star. Um, but yeah, I still wasn't too crazy about it, and and I kind of hate the whole like you have factions, but you're not going to use factions when it matters, and you do when it does, whenever it's convenient. Like it just seems stupid. Um, so like, was it um, like here you? You don't have Santana or Ortiz come out or best friends come out again. Like you could have reused them to kind of make it, I don't know, a little bit more interesting since technically it's like a no disqualification match other than like putting them in the orange juice. So, I mean, you could have had them, I guess because it's been done the whole feud, but I would have had them maybe come out just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, obviously, you knew they spent the money on the mimosa, so somebody was going to go in it. Um, it goes back and forth for a good while with a couple of um, teasers of it going in. I think Jericho at one point, like, I think it was Jericho, like, literally, like, reaches so hard to try to get his leg to touch. Um, that made me laugh because you could see, like, his leg, like, trying to reach for the the pool to make sure he gets in there. Um, and then, of course, uh, they have to specify, which I'm really thinking if you're going to do uh, specialty matches, you really need to stop being very nitpicky with the rules because that way somebody who's like not listening to the part where you're explaining the rules can understand what's going on. Um, they did it with the tables match with um, Sammy and Matt where it's like, well, your opponent has to put you through the table. You can go through the table and that's fine, but your yeah, opponent has to put you through. So the same with the Mimosa match. They're like, you can touch the Mimosa match, but your whole body has to go in in order to lose. Like, well, I, I mean, I, I thought that was pretty much... Like, that's like, what I thought you would have to do. Because when they said you have to be inside the pool, not just the yeah. body part, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, so that's what I thought too. I was like, I thought that was kind of self-explanatory. Like you're gonna go in, but yeah, same with like the table match where they're like, we have a table match, but it's not a WWE table match. You have to be thrown in there by your opponent. You can accidentally fall in, and that's fine. Which that just kind of teased like, well, obviously somebody's gonna go through a table by accident. Um, so same with the most match. Like I assume there's gonna be close calls where they're gonna like go in there, and then they're probably gonna try to like choke each other with the juice and drown them. So I figured that was gonna happen. Um. So, of course, um, it took not one, not two, but three. Um, I forget what they call it. They actually gave it a name now. It's not the Superman punch. It's, um, I think it's the freshly squeezed punch. Oh, the, or- the orange punch. That's what they're calling it. Um, so, he hits him with three orange punches, which is a Superman punch. And then on the third one, um, Jericho falls into the, well, he floats into the mimosa. I like how he just, like, floated there like a pool just to let you know he's in there. Um, BTE has a cool shot of it where like the splash zone and everybody getting soaked in the mimosa. Oh yeah, everyone got fucking soaked <laughs> on that one. Um, so um, I mean it was cool. I don't know whether we'll ever use this stipulation match ever again. Oh. Like, it doesn't make sense, but um, if you're making the video game, put it in there. I'll still play it. <laughs> um, it's their version of the cage match, <laughs> right? Oh, that's going to be next. The Elimination Chamber is going to be a Mimosa Vat uh, blood and guts match. It's going to be three rings, two cages, and six um, buckets of Mimosa. Um, So, of course, that brings us to the main event here. Um, We have the AEW World Championship, John Moxley versus MJF. Um, Like I said, um, after the Battle Royal, it kind of gave it away for me on who was going to win. I was hoping things would change, but... Um, of course, MJF coming out. I love how, um, he, his like robe, like on the outside, it was like a British like flag type thing. And then when he opens the inside of his robe, it has the U S flag and his whole U S attire. Um, which I know, um, which kind of played into the funny part about the whole, like John being a dictator, but yet he's wearing like tyrant, a tyrant robe. Uh, with the U.S. flag under. I do hope um, the toy makers actually make that version of MJF. I would love that as a a toy version. Um, So they did play a good uh, dynamic because I know the whole thing MJF was saying was that um, that Moxie only can win when he takes the fight outside. So for the first, I think, what, like five, ten minutes of it, um, Moxley's trying to throw him out and he keeps like running back into the ring because he knows he has control inside the ring. That was a good little dynamic um, there. And then finally he ends up getting him outside. And uh, Moxley, of course, takes the advantage. And they mentioned that that um, that's the best way Moxley has an advantage there. Um, uh, MJF um, gets blood going into that steel pole. Um, after going head first in it, uh, I like how they <laughs> cut back to Moxley trying to pop his shoulder in place um, to cover up the fact that uh, MJF is trying to get blood. Uh, so Moxley the whole time is actually getting his arm worked, which goes back to MJF being an actual, quote, wrestler and not just somebody who's trying to fight. Um, so I thought that was a good dynamic that they actually show him. Um, actually affecting a body part, showing the difference between him and Moxley, where Moxley's just trying to destroy MJF, period. Um, so then it goes back and forth. Of course, the paradigm shift is banned at this point. There is a part where Moxley's getting ready to do it, and it kind of annoyed me that the referee was like, hey, 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 don't do it. Like, it shouldn't be the referee's fault to enforce that. Um, But yeah, he was like, don't do it. So then finally, after, what, 20 minutes of this going on. Uh, Warlord gets on the uh, apron and tosses uh, MJF the ring. And he botches the throw, which then Moxley sees that um, MJF's trying to cheat. So then he hits him with the Paradigm Shift. And one, two, three, he retains the title. Now setting up a future match against the Warhawk. Uh, what do you think about the match? I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I thought... Mm-hmm. It was good pacing. I thought that there was a lot of uh, drama to it. Um, I do agree the ref should. I mean, why is the ref? The ref was being biased. 
You know, mm-hmm. like why would the ref care if MJF uh, or uh, if, if MJF uh, if Moxley loses the belt in qualification or not? You know, but I guess he has some force of rules too, though. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I I do get that part. Um, I liked it overall. I thought it was a great way to protect uh, MJF, mm-hmm. uh, and it was a good way to show that uh, Moxley outsmarted. So he outsmarted um, uh, MJF. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed it. I liked it. You know, towards the end, I thought that the matches were uh, so much better. Mm-hmm. So it, it, the first half was just really depressing and like just out of whack, and then the second half of the show kind of came together. So mm-hmm. uh, first half, of the, so pretty much the first half of the show, don't watch it unless it's a Young Bucks match. Mm-hmm. Then watch the second half. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I say. I think it's it was probably the worst one they've had. But when you're ranking them all, it's kind of tough. It's kind of like when NXT, you know, the golden era of NXT, like 2012 to like 2015. Like they're not bad, they're not terrible shows, but one of them has to be the worst one. <laughs> like there has to be a last place, and I kind of feel like that's where this fits in, just because of what occurred with all the botches. Like obviously, the first All Out will always be, you know, the memorable one because that's the first show as AEW. Um, but um, yeah, I feel like there there hasn't, they really haven't fallen on pay per views, but I think this was. I guess you can use the excuse it was out of their hands because they were, you know, expecting Matt Hardy to get a concussion and all the stuff to happen. But um, I think it is one of the, I think overall it's one of the weaker shows. I think it's one of the best main events. I thought this one was way better than Brody Lee and uh, Moxley. Um, but again, of course, it was a way better wrestler. I don't think uh, Mr. Brody Lee is as good of a wrestler as they're trying to push him. Um, yeah. I think he's great comedically. <laughs> on the show, um, which we'll jump into here in a minute with BT. Um, but yeah, overall, um, I guess if I had to rate it out of five, I'd give it like a three and a half, maybe a three, um, overall for the show. Yeah. I'd give it probably the same thing. Three and a half. Yeah. So, um, we'll do a quick recap of dynamite. Um, yeah. Doing multiple shows over like pay-per-views. These are going to be long episodes. 